We continue with chapter 14, Sharing Perception with the Holy Spirit. What do you want? Light or darkness? Knowledge or ignorance? Are yours, but not both. Opposites must be brought together, not kept apart. For their separation is only in your mind, and they are reconciled by union, as you are. In union, everything that is not real must disappear, for truth is union. As darkness disappears in light, so ignorance fades away when knowledge dawns. Perception is the medium by which ignorance is brought to knowledge. Yet the perception must be without deceit, for otherwise it becomes the messenger of ignorance rather than a helper in the tr search for truth. The search for truth is but the honest searching out of everything that interferes with truth. Truth is. It can neither be lost, nor sought, nor found. It is there, wherever you are, being within you. Yet it can be recognized or unrecognized, real or false to you. If you hide it, it becomes unreal to you because you hid it and surrounded it with fear. Under each cornerstone of fear on which you have erected your insane system of belief, the truth lies hidden. Yet you cannot know this, for by hiding truth in fear, you see no reason to believe that the more you look at fear, the less you see it, and the clearer what it conceals becomes. It is not possible to convince the unknowing that they know. From their point of view, it is not true. Yet it is true, because God knows it. These are clearly opposite viewpoints on what the, quote, unknowing are. To God, unknowing is impossible. It is therefore not a point of view at all, but merely a belief in something that does not exist. It is only this belief that the unknowing have, and by it they are wrong about themselves. They have defined themselves as they were not created. Their creation was not a point of view, but rather a certainty. Uncertainty brought to certainty does not retain any conviction of reality. Our emphasis has been on bringing what is undesirable to the desirable, what you do not want to what you do. You will realize that salvation must come to you this way, if you consider what dissociation is. Dissociation is a distorted process of thinking whereby two systems of belief which cannot coexist are both maintained. If they are brought together, their joint acceptance becomes impossible. But if one is kept in darkness from the other, their separation seems to keep them both alive and equal in their reality. Their joining thus becomes the source of fear, for if they meet, acceptance must be withdrawn from one of them. You cannot have them both, for each denies the other. Apart, this fact is lost from sight for each, in a separate place, can be endowed with firm belief. Bring them together, and the fact of their complete incompatibility is instantly apparent. One will go, because the other is seen in the same place. Light cannot enter darkness when a mind believes in darkness, and will not let it go. Truth does not struggle against ignorance, and love does not attack fear. What needs no protection does not defend itself. Defense is of your making. God knows it not. The Holy Spirit uses defenses on behalf of truth only because you made them against it. His perception of them according to his purpose merely changes them into a call for what you have attacked with them. Defenses, like everything you made, must be gently turned to your own good, 
translated by the Holy Spirit from means of self-destruction to means of preservation and release. His task is mighty, but the power of God is with him. Therefore, to him it is so easy that it was accomplished the instant it was given him for you. Do not delay in your return to peace by wondering how he can fulfill what God has given him to do. Leave that to him who knows. You are not asked to do mighty tasks yourself. You are merely asked to do the little he suggests you do, trusting him only to the small extent of believing that if he asks it, you can do it. You will see how easily all that he asks can be accomplished. The Holy Spirit asks of you but this. Bring to him every secret you have locked away from him. Open every door to him and bid him enter the darkness and lighten it away. At your request he enters gladly. He brings the light to darkness if you make the darkness open to him. But what you hide he cannot look upon. He sees for you and unless you look with him he cannot see. The vision of Christ is not for him alone, but for him with you. Bring therefore all your dark and secret thoughts to him, and look upon them with him. He holds the light, and you the darkness. They cannot coexist when both of you together look on them. His judgment must prevail, and he will give it to you as you join your perception to his. Joining with Him in seeing is the way in which you learn to share with Him the interpretation of perception that leads to knowledge. You cannot see alone. Sharing perception with Him whom God has given you teaches you how to recognize what you see. It is the recognition that nothing you see means anything alone. Seeing with Him will show you that all meaning, including yours, comes not from double vision, but from the gentle fusing of everything into one meaning, one emotion, and one purpose. God has one purpose which He shares with you. The single vision which the Holy Spirit offers you will bring this oneness to your mind with clarity and brightness so intense you could not wish for all the world not to accept what God would have you have. Behold your will, accepting it as His, with all His love as yours. All honor to you through Him and through Him unto God. And from the workbook, Review 3. Lessons 91 to 110 Introduction Our next review begins today. We will review two recent lessons every day for 10 successive days of practicing. We will observe a special format for these practice periods that you are urged to follow just as closely as you can. We understand, of course, that it may be impossible for you to undertake what is suggested here as optimal each day and every hour of the day. Learning will not be hampered when you miss a practice period because it is impossible at the appointed time. Nor is it necessary that you make excessive efforts to be sure that you catch up in terms of numbers. Rituals are not our aim and would defeat our goal. But learning will be hampered when you skip a practice period because you are unwilling to devote the time to it that you are asked to give. Do not deceive yourself in this. Unwillingness can be most carefully concealed behind a cloak of situations you cannot control. Learn to distinguish situations that are poorly suited to your practicing from those that you establish to uphold a camouflage for your unwillingness. 
those practice periods that you have lost because you did not want to do them, for whatever reason, should be done as soon as you have changed your mind about your goal. You are unwilling to cooperate in practicing salvation only if it interferes with goals you hold more dear. When you withdraw the value given them, allow your practice periods to be replacements for your litanies to them. They gave you nothing, but your practicing can offer everything to you, and so accept their offering and be at peace. The format you should use for these reviews is this. Devote five minutes twice a day or longer, if you would prefer it, to considering the thoughts that are assigned. Read over the ideas and comments that are written down for each day's exercise. And then begin to think about them while letting your mind relate them to your needs, your seeming problems, and all your concerns. Place the ideas within your mind and let it, let it use them as it chooses. Give it faith that it will use them wisely, being helped in its decisions by the one who gave the thoughts to you. What can you trust but what is in your mind? Have faith in these reviews. The means the Holy Spirit uses will not fail. The wisdom of your mind will come to your assistance. Give direction at the outset, then lean back in quiet faith and let the mind employ the thoughts you gave as they were given you for it to use. You have been given them in perfect trust, in perfect confidence that you would use them well, in perfect faith that you would see their messages and use them for yourself. Offer them to your mind in that same trust and confidence and faith. It will not fail. It is the Holy Spirit's chosen means for your salvation. Since it has His trust, His means must surely merit yours as well. We emphasize the benefits to you if you devote the first five minutes of the day to your reviews and also give the last five minutes of your waking day to them. If this cannot be done, at least try to divide them so you undertake one in the morning and the other in the hour just before you go to sleep. The exercises to be done throughout the day are equally important and perhaps of even greater value. You have been inclined to practice only at appointed times and then go on your way to other things without applying what you learn to them. As a result, you have gained little reinforcement and have not given your learning a fair chance to prove how great are its potential gifts to you. Here is another chance to use it well. In these reviews, we stress the need to let your learning not lie idly by between your longer practice periods. Attempt to give your daily two ideas a brief but serious review each hour. Use one on the hour and the other one a half an hour or later. You need not give more than just a moment to each one. Repeat it and allow your mind to rest a little time in silence and in peace. Then turn to other things, but try to keep the thought with you and let it serve to help you keep your peace throughout the day as well. If you are shaken, think of it again. These practice periods are planned to help you form the habit of applying what you learn each day to everything you do. Do not repeat the thought and lay it down. Its usefulness is limitless to you, and it is meant to serve you in all ways, all times, and places, and whenever you need help of any kind. Try then to take it with you in the business of the day and make it holy, worthy of God's Son, acceptable to God and to yourself. Each day's review assignments will conclude with a restatement of the thought to use each hour and the one to be applied on each half hour as well. Forget them not, 
This second chance with each of these ideas will bring such large advances that we come from these reviews with learning gains so great we will continue on more solid ground with firmer footsteps and with stronger faith. Do not forget how little you have learned. Do not forget how much you can learn now. Do not forget your father's need of you as you review these thoughts he gave to you. Lesson 111 for Morning and Evening Review Miracles are seen in light. I cannot see in darkness. Let the light of holiness and truth light up my mind and let me see the innocence within. Miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one. I see through strength the gift of God to me. My weakness is the dark His gift dispels by giving me His strength to take His place. On the hour Miracles are seen in light. On the half hour, miracles are seen in light, and light and strength are one. Amen. <laughs>